you said, I've read Sia Ram May Sab Jag Jani. Uh, my, my Hindi pronunciation is, probably isn't very good, but I googled this. I found it from Tulsi Das Ramayana, in which he says, I find Ra Sita and Rama in every part of the world. And you say, you refer to that, and you also refer to another saying, uh, Vasudev uh, Idam Savam. That means Vasudev, but uh, God, Vishnu, is all this. And you also refer to the, um, the Upanishads, but say, all this is Brahman. And, and you say, including the world of dreams. You, you, you say you've read that, and you've also read Nothing exists, nothing belongs to me, and there is only one. Are they two sides of the same coin? Yes, that is, as it is said in the Upanishads, what actually exists is ekam eva advitiam, one only without a second. That one only is Brahman, and you are that, Tatvamasi. So you are mm. the only thing that actually exists. So all these other things, since there's only one thing, which what actually exists is one, but we see the seeming existence of many things. So these many things, though they seem to be many, they are actually only the one thing that exists, namely yourself. So we are seeing ourselves as many. So that is why it is said, all this is um, Brahman, all this is Vasudev, all this is Rama and Sita. In, in other words, it is all you yourself. You are seeing yourself as all this multiplicity. And it is also said, um, nothing exists. Nothing means other than you. Nothing other than you exists. Nothing belongs to me. There is only one. That only one is you. Nothing else exists. So all mm -hmm. these other things are mere appearance. And they're mere vivata. Vivata means it's an illusory appearance. It is like... If you see a, a, a rope and mistake it to be a snake, does that snake exist? As a snake, it doesn't exist. As a rope, it does exist. The snake is nothing other than a rope, but the rope is not a snake. So all this is Brahman, but Brahman is not all this. Brahman is one, ever indivisible. Brahman is, as Bhagavan describes beautifully in <clears throat> verse 28 of um, Upadesh Undia, he says, if one knows what the real nature of oneself is, then anadi, ananta, akanda, satchidananda. Anadi means beginningless, because it's timeless. It had neither beginning nor end. Ananta means endless, limitless, infinite. So it's infinite in all ways. Akanda means unbroken, undivided, indivisible. Satchidananda. So you, that is the one thing that actually exists. Uh, Tatvamasi, you are that. So what should you attend to? Don't attend to anything other than yourself. Don't attend to any mantra or tantra or anything, even name or form of God you can leave, because the reality of God is what is shining in you as I. So Bhagavan is always pushing us to go deeper and deeper and deeper. For people who weren't ready to go deeper, he would sometimes extol the greatness of Nama Japa, because that's the level at which that, per that person is not yet ready to go beyond that level. But if we come to Bhagavan and want to know what Bhagavan has taught us, what he has taught us is, as he said beautifully to an illiterate Tamil village woman, Unne Vidamal Iru, be without leaving yourself. Those three words summarize the whole of Bhagavan's teachings. If we hold on to ourselves, we subside in our being and just be as th that. That is all we need to know. If other thoughts appear, to whom do they appear? To me, you turn your attention back and again subside. Simple as that. So Bhagavan's teachings, if we understand them correctly, they are incredibly simple. 